So today my Steam Deck OLED arrived. I got the 512 gigabyte model and I have dual boot set up already on my LCD Steam Deck. But I want to transfer this over to my OLED so I don't have to set anything up on it. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the drive from my LCD Steam Deck and put it in the OLED Steam Deck. And we'll see what happens when I turn it on. I had made sure before removing this to update SteamOS on my LCD Steam Deck to the latest which was 3.5.5. A couple things to note about the Steam Deck hardware is that while the Steam Deck OLED backplates are very similar, the screws not only come with Torx heads on the OLED Steam Deck, but they're also all the same size, which is different from the LCD Steam Deck. On the LCD Steam Deck, its screws on the four corners are longer than the ones in the middle, so don't try and interchange these. Also, something that scared me is as I was opening the Steam Deck OLED, it turned on. On the LCD models, they were shipped with battery storage mode enabled, but in this case, on my OLED, OLED, out of the box, the battery storage mode was not enabled, so I had to go in and turn it on. On the Steam Deck OLED, the heat shield is a little different, and you don't have to follow my lazy method here, but I was just trying to avoid taking off the ribbon cable that is adhered onto the bottom of it. In fact, I wouldn't recommend this method that I'm doing because I probably came close to tearing the ribbon cable. So really, this is not an instructional video to show you exactly how to do this. Anyways, once I had finished the swap of my hard drive, from the LCD to the OLED, I went ahead and booted up the OLED. I was presented with my custom dual boot loader, which was Clover, and I was able to boot into SteamOS with no issue. Immediately, it recognizes that it's an OLED Steam Deck and it prompts for a firmware update, which says it can take a few minutes. After rebooting, it went to the bootloader screen again, and I had to repeat this a couple of times before it finished updating all the way. After that, there was no issues with the custom dual boot loader or booting into SteamOS every everything was functioning just fine. So now that I knew SteamOS was working great, I went ahead and tested Windows. Once it logged into Windows, I was presented with the flipped display due to the portrait display of the Steam Deck OLED, just like the Steam Deck LCD. And here in Device Manager, we can see that there's a new graphics driver. Before it was AMD Custom 0405, and now it is showing as AMD Custom 0932. Valve has provided APU drivers to be able to update. So I was able to update them as well as rotate the display. But unfortunately, as of making this video, Valve has not yet supplied the drivers for the Wi-Fi, audio, or Bluetooth yet. Someone on the Windows on Deck subreddit found a driver from Lenovo that they claim is working for Wi-Fi, but there's still no audio or Bluetooth drivers. I would recommend just waiting for Valve to provide the official proper drivers, but I will link in the description the driver from Lenovo as well as the official drivers page for Valve when the driver drivers become available. Lastly, I wanted to see if using the OLED's hard drive out of the box and swapping it into my LCD deck was going to work. When I got it connected and booted up, I was presented with the normal blue SteamOS logo. Unfortunately though, the screen just stayed here. I left it for about 30 minutes and it was just frozen, so I had to do a hard shutdown and then when I powered it back on, voila! SteamOS finished loading up and everything was working. So it's pretty awesome you can just swap the Steam Deck hard drives with really no problems at all, even if you have a custom dual boot setup. As far as the OLED, I am really liking it. I do feel the slight difference in weight. The analog sticks feel much more premium, but I can't help but feel I should have gotten the limited edition. But good news is it's still available. I ordered one, and so I hope I get my hands on it soon, and I'm going to try to do a follow-up video comparing the glossy and the etched screen differences if I have them around at the same time. That's going to do it for this video, and I'll see you next time.